Cooper for this team. When I came back from my first space flight and sat in my living room with my wife, I remember telling her, it was amazing how you see the world, the speed you're heading over the world, the big curve of it. It's exactly like they guessed it would be when they showed it in 2001. The imagery of it as that ship that, that left Earth and it, it is coming up to, to dock with the rotating space station, the sort of gigantic slow ballet of spaceships. At the time, I remember thinking it's like, you know, elephants mating, this big, ponderous, <coughs> careful, three-dimensional activity with a specific purpose in mind. That, that's, that's what it felt like to fly a ship up to try and dock with a space station. The little pen floating out of the passenger on board was falling asleep. And now the, the flight attendant walking down the aisle and having Velcro on the bottom of her shoes matching the Velcro on the floor. The inside of the International Space Station, it's, it's, there's Velcro everywhere. Anywhere you want to stick anything, including that pen, there's Velcro on the pen with the, with the one type of Velcro and, and the wall is the you know, pile or hook. She did sort of stumble though, which was obviously a gravity thing if you watch it really close. But the idea of placing one foot and placing another foot and feeling them almost like uh, someone walking up a wall of ice or something, uh, that was an interesting solution to the problem. I think it's beautifully, artistically, and quite scientifically portrayed. It, it's great. This movie is Wally, really designed for kids, very sweet. In this scene, Wally is out there flying around in space and having fun using a fire extinguisher. And Eve, the more advanced robot, has own propulsion system. Uh, I'm a little confused about Eve because Eve's head isn't attached to the body, but there's this weird sort of red cable umbilical on the outside. What intrigued me was how the animators moved Wally around by firing a fire extinguisher. And it would work just fine. You get a fire extinguisher, you pull the trigger, all that stuff flies out of the fire extinguisher, and if you don't brace yourself, it is sort of push you over on Earth. If you're floating in space and you can't brace yourself at all, it's gonna propel you just like a little rocket motor. And, and they were clever enough to make sure that Wally always got it down to the center of his body. Because if you did it up by your head, then it would push you off center and you just sort of pinwheel. But if you can push it through the middle of your mass, middle of your body, then it's going to move you in a, in a straight line. And he's very careful to constantly move the nozzle to the right spot. It's quite cute and quite a nice little study of, uh, of orbital mechanics. The very first American space rock by Ed White Lab, he actually had one of those squirters with him. Not a fire extinguisher, but a little handheld uh, squirter that he could maneuver around with. Eventually, we found it was an impractical way to move. You're better just to put handholds on the ship or wear a jetpack. But that same thing that Wally's using that was actually used by the first American to ever walk in space. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark. This is Sunshine, the movie about a, a crew having to reignite the sun. But in this scene, the crew recognized that they're going to see Mercury go between them and the sun. It's almost like a tiny little version of an eclipse. And people love eclipses, you know, it's, it's almost mystical, it's, it's a neat thing to see. And so I think that, that would be natural. The crew would love to see Mercury highlighted against the light of the sun. In the scene, Mercury is whipping around the sun. I mean, just in the time it takes those people to sit and look out the window, it goes probably an eighth of the way around the sun. In Earth days, Mercury takes like uh, months, 88 days or something to go around the sun. So you wouldn't perceive the motion relative to the sun, just looking out the window like they are. Also, the sun it is uh, stupendously bright. How are you seeing Mercury against the sun? It's, it's like staring at, at the headlights of a car and trying to see, you know, a uh, marble or something. You, you just, your eyes would be so overpowered by the brilliance of the sun, unless they've got some really great special filters somehow on their viewing screen in their ship. What's nice about the scene is the sense of wonder, the awe at the majesty of the reality of the rest of the universe, and seeing it firsthand. I've been around the world uh, 2,650 times or so, and I never once could <laughs> see enough of it. During my first spacewalk, while I was outside, he said, dark, I've been around the world over far enough 2,000 and some times. I'm like, what it the fuck? So That's a lot of all you son of a bitch. You're lying. And such a, a You're talking about your orbit. Experience. <laughs> to look at the Northern Lights is like magic. To be in them just I mean, so, yes, technically, you've been around the world. 
beyond tragic. Jeez. Technically. My last orbit of the world was... Which is the best kind of correct. ...and magnificent yes. and, and awe-inspiring than, than all of the ones before. Technically correct the is usually the kind of correct that's followed with, you know, Walter, you're not wrong, you're just an asshole. Sits, and the environment that we're in is so uh, constantly yeah. magnificent that when you're looking at it, you talk in hushed tones. You know, like you've walked into a giant forest or, or the most beautiful cathedral on earth. You don't, you don't talk in a big brassy voice there. You're reverential for where you are. And, and I think that little scene gets some of that, the reverence and, and understanding of the, both the minuscule nature of being a human in, in the enormity of the universe, but also the enormity of being able to see it in that way, the, the huge awareness that we have of, of our ability to try and interpret and understand it. Uh, I think they portrayed that well. I'm Chris Hadfield. I love space movies. It was nice to have a chance to look at look at some of them with you. I look forward to every new space movie that comes out, and hopefully maybe some of the things that I've said here will help you see each of the new space movies that you see through an astronaut's eyes. Happy very Chris Hatfield, I'm doing the Wired Auto Complete interview. Let's begin. What, Chris Hatfield, in the search engine, here we go. What inspired Chris Hatfield to become an astronaut? The first people to walk on the moon. When Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong walked to the moon in July 20 of 69, I thought, if they could do that, I could do that. That inspired. What was Chris Hadfield's education? I went to a bunch of different schools, but basically I'm a farmer and a mechanical engineer and a pilot, fighter pilot, test pilot. That was my education to become an astronaut. What was Chris Hadfield's first job? I grew up on a farm, but when you're growing up on a farm, it's not really sort of a job, it's just what you do every day after school. My first real job was working in a scientific shipping warehouse. When a school ordered scientific equipment, I was the guy back in, in the shipping department that would collect the, the pig fetuses or the, the weigh scale, put them in a box, and mail them to a school. That was my first job. What did Chris Hadfield find in space? What did I find in space? A new way to look at the world. What did Chris Hadfield, this is terrible English, what did Chris Hadfield learn from going blind. Well, I, I learned better English from this sentence. Here. During my first spacewalk, there was contamination inside my space suit that <coughs> blinded me. What did I learn from that? Number one, don't panic. Panic doesn't really help, especially if you're all alone in space. And the second was, you need to do a better job of cleaning the visor of your space helmet because it's, it was actually the anti-fog in the visor that got into my eyes that made me go blind. So remember, if you're doing a spacewalk, clean your visor really carefully and uh, don't let it get in your eyes. Emerging from below, as often scrolls on a computer screen, these are the questions that begin with, where? Where, Chris Hadfield?
Hello. Is that not one of the coolest things you've ever seen? So not having full choke would make it even worse. Now, Walla, what other options are there besides barrel shroud? Why do you think barrel shroud is so damn good? All right, so I'm here on the sun and death. You don't have to be quiet. You just single barrel you can get, and the reason why I said not to use rifle barrel is because it actually removes. She didn't seem to mind me setting up the camera. Imagine you're using rifle barrel on the found verdict, and I just showed you guys this doesn't really have much handling to work with from the start. A little spoon bed. And see all the other ones. It's weird because all of the species make different kinds of nests. <coughs> like this one way back here has two nests on either side of the enclosure, and she kind of goes in between the two of them equally. And the other one I think is molting. It is built. Three nests. Four. Four nests. Seems to finally like this one. So, I think she's molting. And then this one, she's building herself an ultra thick bed. Like, but when I first moved in, it was like 560, now it's like 590. 
or I guess not, it's not reach out, still not. Yeah. And, and you know, I got the upper, just a little bit more, but like. It's I have a weird. I, I have one of those things. I don't want to be in the lower. Because then you have just random, like, walking by, and having random reasons to look in your window. And that's just. And some of them are legit, but, like, I don't want to deal with that. Because I like having windows open. I think I'm fortunate to do a wall. It's tough to be on the first floor. It's not building, especially, I can see it. Yeah. Like, right, like, or not, there's no elevation to your, yeah. your, oh like, you're literally, your balcony is right there, the walk of the door. Yeah. 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 I, I and so I'm always the sort where I'm like, I like having an upper, so that way if they want to look at my window, they at least got to get a ladder on. <laughs> you know? Or they're Superman, in which case, well, hey, I'll do it. Exactly. Or they got to, like, climb up on the porch, you know, so I can be like, <laughs> This is a goose. Yeah, right. Oops, you climbed up the ladder to the wrong apartment. <laughs> wrong window. <laughs> and I don't have kids where they need to run in with, you know, sliding glass doors and crap. Like that. And I'm not disabled where I need, like, ground floor. You don't have tons of heavy furniture. Well, you know what? I moved them. So I'm not going to do that. I was talking with this old lady who moved in, like, she also got an upper. She, like, bought new furniture. First she moved in, she had, like, wicker furniture. <laughs> Looked like wicker, like, porch furniture. And then she got, like, new stuff. And I was just, like, I'm like, man, I don't, I'm like, I still got a folding table for my kitchen table. I'm like, I've moved too many times. I didn't want to have to pay extra for the big U-Haul or order the big U-Haul and have them give me the little U-Haul. Talking about there for price, thirteen hundred dollars for a one bedroom. Think about how much of most people's paycheck that is. Like how much of their income. That would be three quarters of many Green Bay. Yeah. You know, and then seventeen hundred dollars for a two bedroom. Like that'd be. You're talking of sharing an apartment with somebody and paying luxury apartment prices. $850 for a fucking apartment you're splitting with somebody. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And th that's, this city doesn't, we don't, there isn't the base for that. That's. And then you're a non profit community church, and then you have your community church LLC. Yeah. I really dislike that. I'm not a fan of that anymore. Yeah, I think that's disgusting. Yeah. I don't know much about that. Churches being able to churches being able to run as a Are you a non profit when it's convenient and for profit when you want? <coughs> that's um And then you're just like, Well, we'll have the businesses we like sometimes and if we don't like it we'll ditch it. You aren't even approved in your saying that? Like They um uh, there's that arc encounter down there in Tennessee. And like they were losing money on the nonprofit side, so they tried to sell the whole thing to the pro the for profit side. Did you throw your clicky wet lighter away? What? Nope. In this in the bucket over here. Yeah, why? Is it dead? I thought you had just bought it. No, I found that letter. Um. But yeah, when I saw the prices on that, I was just... Oh, that's it. just so sick, dude. It's <coughs> just, just... Like...
So let's say they decide to get the one bed the people in the community on the forums read it. Or the two. Because you're a community church. So you're thinking this person's probably going to have a family. saying, no, we'll get into that in just a second. Now, what happened about a year ago was that skill based matchmaking yeah, that's some bullshit. every playlist, but Cosmo, the community manager, tweeted out that's something true. along yeah. the lines of, we are going down a different road and we're going to try things differently and we're going to remove skill based matchmaking from the majority of playlists. Now, I think the only playlist that it continues to exist in is like elimination and comp right now, so keep, keep that in mind. And obviously, Trials has its own different variation of matchmaking, so keep that in mind. But I mean, I realize that, you know, running a business is not a charity, and but still. The reason why this is an issue is because in Destiny 2, it's such a casual game, and there's so many different elements to the game, like you need to beat bounties, like go get kills with a sidearm. Or and then the other thing I thought was kind of just got a new thought just got introduced to this season, etc. So adding skill based matchmaking when you're trying oh. to experiment with new weapons and new this things. This is just kind of interesting. Really frustrating. They had right all now. these different That's schools talking about I'm whether they're having like, masks cool. or not. Uh, like Seymour won't require masks. Ash Robin on schools, masks optional. Masks optional. Green Bay. District-wide mask mandate. So a lot of people have been criticizing the season 15 mask making uh, because it seems okay, so like you have to wear a mask here in Green Bay. Bungie Community Manager D&G responded today with this thing. Truthful matchmaking. Reach out to the team to verify. Each of these we see reports from players thinking skin And like they talk about the different, you know, districts. And like, has a little story. Every time we check, this is true. This has happened, I think, the last two, maybe even three seasons. Double checking today to confirm. But more than likely, no changes have been made. Then they have the one where you see deep here, the deep here meeting. It's like all doctors who are talking at their meeting. And then you have these other districts where they're just like, we don't want masks. We'll get a bug in to add that line in the bag. Interesting. Next up we have, ultimately, we're seeing inconsistencies in reports. Some matches feel competitive, some feel like one team never had a chance, some folks report skill-based matchmaking, then drop 40-plus kills in some so, so quick games. We're relaying the feedback to the team that do not see firm evidence of skill-based matchmaking enabled. So, let me know your thoughts and your opinions. If you've been playing PvP in Season 15, what has your experience been like? Does it feel like the matches are lopsided? Have you been getting mercy, or have you been giving mercies out a ton in all the different places that you've had? I've had some fun playing PvP. I've definitely had tough matches here and there. It felt like for me, when I was playing Rumble, the skill based matchmaking was like on because it was just tough game after yeah, tough like game. Yeah, like Green Bay, they are talking about like CDC. Sort of you know, yeah. maybe there's just like a lot their of reasoning is they're like Rumble saying stuff time, like you know, saying, Who knows they're looking at what, CDC works, recommendations. Bad, is for Rumble, but mm -hmm. my experience in the other six uh, player playlists didn't seem to be too bad. It seemed to be pretty casual. But again, leave, let me know your thoughts and leave your comments down below. And happy to see Bungie actually addressing this one because uh, a ton of people were talking about this. It was actually trending on Twitter today. And then like the Seymour, which so won't remind or require mass schools on buses. Their thing starts out. No, like, there's not skill-based matchmaking added in season 15. Everything has been Despite federal requirements, the Seymour School District will not require mass on school buses when students return to class. I can't understand that. And here's their quote. What sense does it make when you are picking up the same kids every day, dropping them off at school? They can throw their mask in their backpack, but yet they have to put it on on the bus, board member Mike Cottrell said. Some things just don't make sense. It doesn't make sense not making your kids wear a fucking mask. What's up guys, today we're going to be going over the rewards driver for the first time on my channel. So we'll be breaking down exactly how this weapon works, going over how good it is for actor, some of the target tests, and all that good stuff. And at the end of the video, we'll also be making a really cool build to take advantage of this weapon and make it pretty OP in PvE. And if you play this game and you're looking to pre-order which queen or... Meanwhile, like, 
you have deep here. It could be in the comments description. And they mentioned like a comment from like one normal parent, like reading the parents and go, at this point, everyone knows the risk to kids is very low. Parents feel a level And then this followed up with, however, Dr. Mark Rodsky, a surgeon at Prevea, said that the case is Delta variant is affecting kids, filling up pediatric intensive care units in several southern states. Coronavirus is among the top ten Someone's talking about full pediatric intensive care units in Texas where some kids have been transferred to other states for treatment. I think like this whole like Biden presidency and like continuing on is going to be a lot of like not today I learned but like today I recalled 
<coughs> right? We, we suppress so much. Like, it's like bad, like, flashbacks. Like, I remember the time, like, there was one time I was reading an article and somebody had mentioned how they remembered the Trump presidency, like, they were remembering some stupid stuff. You know, and gas lighting, or it wasn't that bad crap. And they remember the time, like, how they had to remind himself of a bunch of the horrible there stuff he did, and then the how he just decided to tweet yeah. one time at, like, 3 a.m., bitching about Barbara Streisand or something. Or like, what the fuck? This is the only the free world? Has left many viewers in but, uh... The TikTok is captured the footage by oh, yeah. the hidden camera. Today I was kind of reminded jungle. about like the whole deal about like America getting out of Afghanistan and Trump having the people at Camp David. Yeah, yeah. I was rem- rem- I remembered that again today. Trump negotiated a ceasefire with the Taliban. Yeah. yeah. And did it include the Afghan government? At all. Yeah. Area. And then the people are complaining when that shit went to fuck when Joe Biden just <laughs> did what Trump said he was going to do. Like, according to yeah. the Trumpers, this is a Dukan ritual. A ritual performed. I don't know what to call it with, with that kind of mess you it's walk in on. Because it's not a mess, it's not a shit show, it's not a train wreck. Like, I don't know what you even call that. The, the worst part of it is, though, is Joe Biden is not free from guilt in that situation. No, no. Because he was already vice president for eight years. Yeah. 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 Right. Now, he is free from blame for the what is going on with the withdrawal. Like that's not his fault. Nothing that's happening with the withdrawal. That's none of that is his fault. There is not a fuck all he could have done to stabilize that situation in the six months that he was there. It couldn't have been done in the nineteen years before that. YouTube Astra Blendong recorded something similar during a live stream while exploring the forest. But that's just gonna it's gonna be one of those things that the press is going to harp on, and people are going to be like, yeah, look at how negatively Joe Biden's approval was taken in, in 2022. The Republicans are going to retake the House and the Senate, and then in 2024, they'll take the White House, and we won't have an America in 2028. There won't be an America. It'll be Trump the God King. And then Ivanka and his daughter, the God Queen. Just trumps for the rest of the It's been suggested that these clips depict a type of demon from Indonesian mythology known as a Lampur. These creatures Do you think we'd be lucky enough to have that kind of consistency? Which they target their uh-huh. victims, most of whom are children. Kind of the... Yeah, right. Knowing this yeah. information, could the strange it's, ritual it's just, taking place in the first clip no, have been an attempt to somehow summon a Lampur? There's no pushback. Why hasn't Merrick Garland arrested motherfuckers all the time? He's had seven months. We know for a fact that there were Congress people that were helping Trump set up that rally with the intent of stopping the certification of the election. That that's there has never been a gathering before on January 6th. Like, that's not... <coughs> that's not a thing that happens. Like, that's... I'm still just shocked that you're able to bring, like, all your weapons and, like, storm the White House and, like, smash a cop's head in the door and beat him with a plague pole and that's not considered, like, serious treason and, like... I don't know what all the legal terms are used, and I didn't know you could have like a noose and like yell, yeah, hang my tents, and yeah, you know, yeah. like the vice president, and yeah, you know, I always thought that was a crime. You know, like yeah. Reality is scary. Kind of like 9/11. I thought that shit got shut down, but you know, I can understand sometimes at the last minute maybe they have something or they're worried about civilians or I don't know, but New York, the 9/11 that was. Not that you can't do. The Pentagon thing I was a little more surprised with, but... I don't know, I'm a little bit wild. 
happens. Okay. Okay. That ain't no fucking plane, dog. Listen, you can look at the hole in the side of the Pentagon. Whatever hit it was not a 737 plane. Okay. That's Something just, hit it, but it was not. Because that's just a whole lot of, like, I'm just like, that's just weird. And I'm like, the only other thing I can think of is if you're just like, there ain't no fucking people in that part of the building here putting, yeah, okay. You can see the video, like, right before of the impactor. They, they show it. Whatever it was, oh, isn't no, a fucking 730, not in my eyes. I, now, obviously, I didn't know, watch the actual impact on that. That was just, I saw, like, the, the hole. I saw New York. And then later on, like, I saw the hole in the Pentagon. And then for me, I was just like. You trust me, that plane that went down in the fucking field in, in Pennsylvania? They tell a great story about how the passengers brought that plane, but that ain't what happened, dog. I promise you the United States shot that plane the fuck out of the sky. And nobody will ever talk about it. It doesn't. That's why nobody will ever talk about it. If people are happy with their story, they're going to let them tell the story. Exactly. And, and it makes for a good story. Yeah. And I mean, if they're fighting and wrestling them down, and then all of a sudden, like, the missile hits, what difference does it make? It doesn't. It does help people work out their issues if they were, you know, fighting before it went down. What difference does it make in the end? And it completely removes the question of why. the YouTuber heads into another Saying, because all the all the families were like, why did you do that? Because we didn't, where, where the fuck was that plane going to go otherwise? Do you understand what I'm saying? We knew we didn't have control of the plane anymore. Like, they knew the terrorists had control of that fucking plane. You are, you're not, it's not something where it's a short order where you're taking off of like Newark, New Jersey, and you're landing one of them into a, there was a, a, a fairly large flight path that that plane had to take yet to get to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. They had time to get fighters in the air and get that plane down. Yeah. I would almost guarantee you, if I were, if I were a betting man, that there were two F8 or two F16 super, uh, uh, no, F16 is the Falcon. F16 Super Falcons launched from Selfridge Air National Guard Base on the short, right, right there above, yeah. above Lake St. Clair slash Lake Erie. And you could fucking, you put on the fucking afterburners and you're, you're in Pennsylvania before you blink because you're doing 2,000 miles an hour, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're doing like Mach 2.2. When my, and you know, and when they need to have something happen, they can have something happen. Like when my uh, uncle the for a time, uh, the died of cancer finally, yeah. he did a lot for the local town and stuff in terms of charity and knew a lot of people who he helped over the years. I don't know how it happened, but somehow he knew, you know, somebody knew he died or whatever. And during his funeral, Somebody did like a flyover. So 